Welcome to Option Trades today. I'm Tony the Bat Batista and I've got a trade idea for you. Well, I actually have an earnings trade idea for you, but let's take a look at what the market's doing. Even the S&Ps are down around $4.50. They've had a relatively tight range today of around 35 handles at 35 points between top and bottom. We've been down anywhere between 25 handles and almost unchanged at the higher end of the range today. Now, you know what I like to do. I like to go to my watch list. I like to look at the high option volume. I like to sort by IV rank. And the first thing you're going to see here is there are a bunch of earnings. Now, you can customize and change uh, what you want to see up here. I've got uh, the last, the net change, the, the IV percentile, the IVX five-day change, which I love to see green when I'm making a trade selling premium, the IV rank, which I love to see high, and earnings, which I don't want to see uh, in any of the stocks that I'm trading uh, unless I'm doing a specific earnings trade. And we've been laying off of earnings trades as of, as of late. Um, I have the IVX index here, and I also have liquidity. Um, for me, it was a very hard time finding trades with high implied volatility and no earnings. If I click on here and go to no earnings, you'll notice that all of the IV ranks are relatively low, or they're an obscure product like like uh, an ultra short, which I'm not interested in trading. But as you go by here, you look at a 48%, you look at UNG, which we made a trade in um, uh, on Thursday. That one's happened to working out well. W, which we put a position on uh, last week also, has been run running horrific. Uh, it's been horrible trade for, for me uh, and for anybody who may have followed along with that trade. As you can see here, Wayfair, um, has had a what a 50% move uh, since we put the trade on. Remember, when you're selling premium, especially if you're selling both sides like the we did in Wayfair, you want the stock to stay inside an expected range. This has gone well, well outside the expected range. I got a lot of emails about this trade, so I want to tell you on this podcast. Although I show you how to get in the trade, you can always go. Um, to the to the follow page on Tastyworks and see all the trades that I do. You can click on uh, Bob the Trader, that's me, and it will sort um, all the trades that I've done. Uh, if you can click off of it, click on it, and it'll sort all the trades that I've done. Um, let me click back on here. You can also search by um, by product too. So let's just go to W here, and it'll sort. So here is the trade that I that I originally put on. Remember, we sold a strangle, bought it back for a, a nice quick little profit of around a buck or so. Uh, that was back on the 18th. Uh, you'll see my little description that I put in here. And then on the 19th, we put on another trade. And subsequently, uh, rinse and repeat did not work. I made an adjustment on the 20th, on the uh, again on the 20th, twice. Um, I made another adjustment on the 23rd and another adjustment uh, today um, on the 24th. So anytime you see something like this where I'm making adjustments and adjustments um, to a trade, it's never a good thing. So to get back to the trades that we're going to do today, if I go back to the high option trades, I'm going to use one of those uh, trades that we've done before, but I'm going to do it in Microsoft, which has earnings uh, coming out after the market closes. Here you can see January 24th with that little bell that means earnings, and that arrow sign pointing to after means after the close. If it was before the market opens, it would be on this side showing January 24th before the market opens. All right, what am I going to look to do? Usually for an earnings trades, we trade, we like to go. Um, shortest dated possible time. I'm going to make this more of a of a kind of just a volatility trade. You got volatility trading a 30, not that high to be honest with you in Microsoft. So maybe it's a volatility trade, maybe it's a directional trade, and that's one of the reasons why I went directional on this trade. I'll explain to you in a moment. IV rank of 38 for earnings, good, not great. Um, I'd rather have seen, uh, remember when Microsoft had earnings last and the stock uh, went down significantly, um, volatility was a lot higher. I'd rather have that. Um, right now, you've got a pretty low volatility environment across the board. Uh, volatility down 40 cents today. I just think that that gives a lot of um, uh, uh, stability to the market when volatility is, is collapsing. I'm hoping that'll equate to volatility uh, collapsing in Microsoft as Microsoft has a, a 0.83 correlation to the market, a very high correlation. So, oh, so goes Microsoft, so goes the market, so goes the market, so goes Microsoft. All right, what are we going to do in here? Like I said, I'm going to go to March. 
I'm going to do a ratio spread in here. It's an omnidirectional trade. I'm looking to buy one of the 220 puts. They have a delta. Let's change from volume to delta here. They have a delta of around 20. I'm going to buy one of those. I'm going to sell two of the 15 puts. I was able to put this trade on for $1.78, uh, I believe. You know what? Let's check that. How can I check that? You can click on here and go down to the follow page. Um, you can just unclick if you wanted to and get back to all of the trades here. But I'll just put me back on there. Uh, put in Microsoft for you, MSFT. And I got filled today. You can see that just a moment ago uh, while we're filming this. Uh, small size strangle trade in March. I bought the 120, sold the 115s, and there's the price at 178. For those of you who are asking, uh, the last time I traded Microsoft, you could see it right here on 106. That's the last time, uh, that's January 6th, is the last time I traded uh, Microsoft. All right, so what are we looking to do here? Like I said, I paid, uh, I sorry, I sold it at $1.78 credit. I bought one of the 220s, sold two of the 215s. It used about $2,200, just over $2,200 uh, in buying power. It's definitely a positive delta trade. It has 11 and a half long deltas. Now, my portfolio over the last couple of days has been picking up some short delta. I need a long uh, delta trade in my portfolio. If you don't need a long delta trade in your portfolio, hey, by all means, let's find a trade for you on the short side that has a very similar probability of profit of around 89%. It does have uh, a delta of positive six. This fits my portfolio. Let's see what you can do for yours. If we go to the same delta of 20 and we go to the same delta of around 15, we buy one, sell two, You'll notice this spread's trading for around 93 cents. So if I was looking to make a bearish trade in Microsoft, I would probably move this down one strike and try to collect over a dollar and change on this spread. Now, let's go back to the trade we did. This one obviously uses um, a little bit more buying power because you've got upside uh, risk in the trade uh, that you don't have. You can only go so far down on the downside. So you are using a little bit more uh, buying power, a lot more buying power on the call side. Let's go back to the 2015 one more time. This is the, sp the spread I'm doing. I'm using $2,200 and change in buying power. I sold it for $1.78 uh, or 79 in credit. Let's simulate. Let's see what happens to the overall stock with volatility not moving at all where this spread could go to. Let's go to a worst case scenario because that's what everybody asks. You've got just about a $10 expected move, just about $10, $11 expected move over the next three days. You've got only a $20 expected move, 19 and change uh, for, for March. But let's just say for argument's sakes that the stock goes down $20 from $240 uh, down to 220. Let's take a look at what the 240, 235, one by two would be trading at. Now, this is assuming that volatility does not move at all. Volatility would probably go higher. This is just a quick back of the envelope way of looking at what my risk is. It's trading for around $5.40. Uh, you'd be looking at around $3.60 in risk on a worst case scenario, meaning the trade or the stock goes down. You want it to go higher. It goes down twice as much as you would expect. Now, listen, I appreciate everybody's support uh, on this podcast. And man, have I been cold over the last week or so with the trades I've been making. So maybe this is not the trade for you. So I showed you both sides. If you want to be bearish, maybe the call ratio spread is for you. I'm putting on the put ratio spread omnidirectional. I know at 215, um, I could make $5 at expiration, but really what do I want to do? I want this stock to go up $10 and I make myself a quick buck. Please like, subscribe, and open up an account at tastyworks.com. Help support us, keep the lights on, and maybe even get me a little bit warmer for my next trade.